It's been a long and difficult summer. I've been toying with the idea of getting rid of FT and Green. But I'm all about showing faith in the youngsters. That George Michael song has been the soundtrack to my summer. I would play it now, but copyright will probably stop me from doing it. But you know the one. Well, I guess it would be nice if I could find a goalie who could save some shots. Look at you, Etienne. You're still here, by the way. I couldn't really find a better one with all the other transfers that we've had. And there's been a few. There's still some of the original team here, which is good. But there's been a lot of changes. It's time to begin season two. Let's roll into it. That's right, everyone. Season 2 begins now, and we start off the summer with multiple transfers. So I'm going to try and give you a quick breakdown of the window. Uh, to start with, Celtic put in a decent offer for Joe Rankin Costello. 2.85 million was what they asked for. In the end, obviously, you know I can't uh, resist a deal, so I ended up negotiating him and selling for £4 million. I did say at the end of last season, I like Rankin Costello. Not sure if he's defensively what we need, but he does make a really good utility player playing right back and left back. There are a number of free transfers, the first of which was a young chap called Mendoza. Uh, he's another centre forward playing at 69. Remember, obviously, Chimiti went back on loan uh, last season, so he's gone back to Everton. But the big one was this boy here, Sven Zimmerman. Got him on a free, 76 rated for a free. I think he might be Tony Cruz's regen. I'm not... Who's Tony Cruz? Tony Cruz, sorry. The first May transfer that we made was for Ethan Laird from Birmingham. Five million pounds for the right back in for Elvis Costello. Definitely an improvement as far as I'm concerned. Then followed by young wonder kid Asan Udrago, I think is how you say it. Bought him in from Schalke for a modest 1.8 million. Very, very happy with that deal. Good technical central midfielder, which I think will do us the world of good. But we needed another really out and out forward. Mendoza being good to replace Jamiti. Enter. Abdallah Seema, who was on the transfer list from Brighton. £3.3 million pounds is what I got him for. He was rated at £3.6 million, so got him under value, 74 rated. Very, very good indeed. A couple of less notable sales was that of Matthew Garbutt, who went for £2.6 million, And John Buckley, who was a player that came back from loan, wasn't sure what the best thing to do was, so I couldn't resist a £7.5 million pound from him from Al Ali. So he went a bit disappointed, um, really, I didn't get much of a chance to him, but I have kind of bigger plans for the midfield, as you will see going through this video. So now the lineup is Green, Pickering, Haim, Carter, and Laird as the back four, with Wharton and Travis in the middle, still the pair. Akras, Zimmerman playing in that right-hand cam role with Seema and Tull up front. Our first game of the season was hosting Birmingham City at Ewood Park. Last year, they came and beat us in our own back garden 1-0 in the run-in to the season. If we won that, we probably would have finished in the automatic promotion spots or not far off. We made a decent start to the game, though. We're only three minutes in here, and Seymour and Tell already linking up. Matisse Tell, obviously, looks to be one of the better players in the league this season. I'll be surprised if he's not in it or wins the golden boot. Uh, he put us 1-0 up after only 10 minutes. Not too bad there. Travis plays some good footwork here into Tell. He gets a little bit of a lucky bounce and makes it 2 after 18. So you can tell we were in free-flowing football here. But as usual, just before half-time, Etienne Green continues where he left off at the end of last season and lets a very easy strike past him, which really annoyed me. But straight from the kickoff, Matisse Tell went for on goal after robbing the defender and miss, missing the chance to get a hat-trick. Incredibly disappointed. But from the resulting goal kick, you can tell we weren't to be perturbed. Harry Pickering does really well to win a header there. Zimmerman plays a lovely ball into Seema. He takes one touch out of his feet. Not a bad way to introduce yourself, is it? We can actually score from long distance. Love that from Seema. And you will see in this episode, I think we've signed an absolute gem here. Remember, he's only 24 years old, so still a little bit of growing to do. But that is postage stamp stuff. Tell eventually would get his hat-trick on 54 minutes. We hit him really, really short bursts in this game to get ourselves a lovely 4-1 victory to start off the season very very impressive. I really want to up our home form this season and make this place a fortress, and that's a good way to start. There's John Buckley leaving to Al Ali for seven and a half million. I also thought, you know what, it's quite realistic for him to go. They'd offer him a shed load of money, so I thought that was the only fair thing to do. 
Next up was Bolton, again at uh, Ewood Park, which is a bit weird to start for two home games in a row. And as you can tell there, Zimmerman, who will be a player you'll become very familiar with and hopefully could be a superstar of this career mode, got us off underway with his first goal for the club. Bolton played some decent football, though, actually. They obviously just come up from League One and they equalised in the 38th minute with a really, really well-taken goal into the far corner. Some lovely interplay, that little channel run that really annoys me. They did that really well. As Alcaraz there forces a good save from the goalkeeper as he tips it onto the post. Second half started, Seam is in, he's lightning quick and he can certainly finish. Once he hits it, it tends to stay hit and that gave us the lead after 55 minutes. Wharton then played a lovely ball into Tell. Tell roasts his man from the similar angle to Seema, drills it across the goalkeeper. Great hit. I can just tell, actually, that the game audio has gone again. So that's good news. I don't know what it is about that, but it feels like it corrupts every now and again. That was a little bit unlucky there from Smodix, who hit the post, but a lovely little finish from Seema again to take him to four goals in two games. Not bad, son, I have to say. He's, uh, he's going to be some player for us going forward. So that was back-to-back 4-1 -back wins. But this was the first real acid test away at Preston. We all know what happened last year where we got a little bit robbed on the final day of the season. Could we extract revenge? Well, we didn't get off to the best of starts. Preston played some really, really nice football here. I was struggling down the right-hand side to contain them. Lovely little one-two into there. And I believe his name is Arawic or something like that. He's a very, very good uh, Croatian centre forward. Uh, played a really, really good pass there and a really good finish from him. And I'd said about Seema being really good at finishing. I mean, yeah. Alcaraz has been a really, really good start. Had a good start to the season as well. And on the 17th minute, Seema went in on goal. Cut back here. Lovely one to tell. Made up for his miss a minute ago with Seema with a lovely assist. And Matisse Tell made it 1-1. Very end-to-end -end stuff against Preston. Very similar to the game at the end of last season where arguably if we'd been a little better at our finishing and a little bit more clinical defensively, then we could have run away with that with the win from... Uh, from detail, especially with the ref being on their side, we could have done a little bit better. Uh, but we couldn't have done much about that goal, to be fair. A really, really good play from Preston. Lovely first time finish. Normally, I would have a go at Etienne Green for being beaten at his near post, but considering he hits it first time, I don't really think I've got many complaints. I can't really get too angry about that. Or can I? Maybe, maybe. Let me know what you think in the comment section if you should have done better. Osmajic, that's his name. He was the guy that was giving us a really, really hard time up front for Preston. And you can tell there, it's a brilliant bit of play. The defence is completely cut apart. And straight after the kickoff of the second half, Osmajic made it 3-1. And again, like I said, very, very end-to-end. -end. Straight from that, we went down the other end. Zimmerman with a lovely little cutback. Played it into Seema, who again gets another goal on his left foot this time. Great finish. Couldn't do what he, well, did what he couldn't do in the first half and finish off. But unfortunately, we weren't to come back in that game and we ended up losing 3 2. Next up was Bournemouth at home. I've skipped through the intro there because I realise that this episode is going to drag on a bit if I do all the intros. But it was a pretty dull game, really, actually. First half, very, very tight, 40 minutes. Uh, and from their first real attack on goal from either team, uh, Heim just absolutely clatters his defender there. Fiverr, who is a very, very good player. Obviously, Bournemouth getting relegated from the Premier League. They are heads and, t head and shoulders above anybody else, really, in the league. Maybe with the exception of Sheffield United and Luton, who came down. Um, and I have to say... They gave us a little bit of a, a little bit of a ring around there. Etienne Green made a great save. And from that move, we put together a nice little one here. Cassius down the right hand side, played a lovely ball there. Look at that for a goal. Look at that. Look at that football. Lovely counter-attacking football. And Alcraz made it 1-1. Very, very pleasing on the eye with a lovely counter-attack. From there on, it was a very end-to-end -end game. You can tell Tell with a lovely little turn here. Feeds it into Seema, who hits a one-time, first-time ball into Archie Gray. All he has to do is finish. And he puts it wide with his left foot. Very, very disappointing. Bournemouth showing off their quality here. Hill played a good ball into Kwame uh, and Ceballos, who linked up with Che Adams. And Ceballos bangs in a wonderful, wonderful effort on his right foot. Bottom of the net. And that was to be the last goal and last real bit of action, as you can tell there. A 2-1 defeat at home to Bournemouth is not the end of the world. But ideally, really, we keep getting ourselves into these positions where we should be doing better. And just not being able to keep the clean sheets or stop the goals from flowing in. Uh, Jake Garrett and Daniel Jevonson both left. And with the number of goals we were conceding, I thought, you know what, it's time to get in a better centre-back. Enter Amel Bele Kotchap. Southampton still in the same division as us. I put 9.5 million down on him, and then he made him our highest paid player on 28 grand a week. A very good deal, I think. A player that we know briefly from a derby career mode last year, if you watch that. Uh, played pretty well in that. Never really got to use him to his full potential. Uh, 
and he didn't make his debut though against Sunderland because he was actually carrying a suspension over from a game against uh, from a game with Southampton. This was literally as dull as dishwater. This game at the Stadium of Light, nothing really happened until the 90th minute there, and Alcaraz summed the game up by missing a bit of a sitter. To be honest, nil nil. Let's move on swiftly. And I believe the final game of today then is the game at home to Swansea. We've had a very mixed start, as you can tell, to the start of the season. Before that, there was a transfer offer in for Dobbin, and you can also tell a transfer offer in for Lewis Travis, but more on that later. Going in from there then, the Swansea game, uh, we didn't uh, get to play Bella Kotchup again. He was still suspended, unfortunately, but he will make his debut in the next episode, don't worry. We need him, as you can tell, because Swansea made it 1-0 after three minutes with a great header from Ginelli, uh, and he was to score again only moments later, 12 minutes into the exact. Harry Pickering really struggling this season on the left-hand side to contain the wingers. A lot of the goals seem to be coming from there. Uh, Matt Grimes put a good ball in, and he scores again. Very, very decent finisher, actually, by the looks of things. Uh, they made it obviously 2-0. Oh, right, OK, we're in trouble here. But straight from the bat, Seema, lovely little toe poke into the back of the net, brings us level again. He's made a brilliant, brilliant start to his life as a Blackburn player, that much is for sure. Tail played in Zimmerman then, just before the stroke of half-time. Another player that's made a really, really good start to his career in a Blackburn shirt, the young German. A lovely, lovely finish. From there, it's a bit of a mixed bag. Not a lot really happened to the 80th minute, but you can tell they're Pickering on the wrong side. Gets caught in possession. I don't really know what was doing there. And I do get away with it. It hits the post, then hits Etienne Green and nearly crosses the line, but not quite. I honestly thought that Etienne Green had scored an own goal, to be honest, which would have just summed it up. So to be 2-0 down, come up for a 2-2, I'll take it. But again, it's dropped points. That's the last of the game, so it's only down to deadline day. And unfortunately... Lewis Travis has left, but for £12 million to Besiktas. I thought Besiktas have got Champions League football. £12 million we wouldn't be able to turn away. I brought in a couple of replacement free transfers uh, who you probably won't see. But the real transfer was this one. And not even a transfer, more of a loan. God, Potts, you don't know what's coming to you. I brought in Trevor Chalaber and put an offer in on deadline day to see if we could get him 50-50 in wages. Another one that I was really looking at was Albert Sambi Lakonga from Arsenal, who was transfer listed, and I managed to get him in for 9.6, and he was joined by Trevor Chalaber. So I think it's safe to say our midfield uh, pivot now is incredibly strong. A few more players left, including Jack Vale, Ricky J. Jones and Harry Leonard. Players that are good, decent, but are never going to get near the squad. And so that brings an end to the start of Season 2. I know this has been a very kind of rapid-fire episode and very, very quick, but the idea of this, basically, is to, for a lack of a better phrase, try and get through the Championship seasons quickly. We already had one whole season of the Championship. I didn't expect to be in it a second season. That's my fault, or Etienne Green's fault. He's going to become villain of the piece. Hopefully one day he'll become a hero. But, yeah. It, it, it's a rapid fire one I, i'm pretty much sure that you guys don't want to watch me play 46 games against championship opposition again so i'm going to be doing a lot of post comms with a little bit of this going in at the same time um so we can still try and keep it a bit fresh and entertaining i might even put the live comment well the, the post commentary feed of me re re um, reviewing it live on it i'm not 100 sure let me know what you guys would like to see in terms of the camera do you want it to be kind of me not facially there and you can just hear my voice or do you want me to be able to see me watching the reactions and wincing every time i can see the goal let me know and more importantly what do you think of the transfers i'm a bit gutted about lewis travis but 12 million the ship test champions league team if if we're being realistic you probably let him go saying about that i then went and got trevor chalaba but on loan on loan which is slightly realistic i don't know let me know Thanks so much for watching the episode. I hope you've enjoyed it. Of course, if you have, you know what to do. Drop a like on the video, share, subscribe, and until I see you again for another episode of Season 2 as we try and whiz through to get promotion to the Premier League. Stay cool, everyone.